Hello, greetings. Okay, I wanted to talk about past lives. Real short. Give you a little bit of my experiences. Uh, I understand for, uh, to give you, before I go into that, uh, as for uh, releasing lifetimes, uh, my process of doing it, is one thing is you, it's different for everybody. I haven't done really, you can do meditations on this, but you don't always have to. I guess it depends on how you feel, how connected you are, how you, you know, you put the intention out. Well, another thing is you put the intention out, I'd like to be able to meditate better. Or, i like to meditate longer. Put all those intentions out, and eventually it will come. Of course, you always change your mind. Just put that out there. But as for releasing lifetimes, way my method, I believe I've mentioned this before, but I'm gonna mention it again. Of uh, releasing lifetimes, such as the Nordic lifetimes. Well, it was not a very friendly Nordic. Let's put it that way. Uh, not Hitler, but something that was very bad. <laughs> yeah, that was pleasant, and that came up in a meditation. Actually, I did not see that coming. I didn't wasn't even looking for it. It just sort of popped up there. It was clear as day also. But as for releasing lifetimes such as the Zeta lifetimes, apparently I have episode 7, but I might have more than that. I have no idea. Anyway, you put the intention out, I'd like to release these lifetimes. I'd like to be healed. And the way I get it is you start, what happens to me, I start visualizing a Zeta crawling out of your chakra or coming out of your chakra or appearing in front of you and I mean some still releasing reptilian lifetimes also but I'll give you something to think about uh, I meant I saw myself as a Zeta that had a yeah I'm s not n now understand you don't have to put all the pieces together if you like to go right ahead we don't have to. To release a lifetime, you just ask for it to be released, and you most likely, if you don't visualize it, it'll come through your dreams, through my dreams have been releasing, and I don't remember any of those. I remember um, being in a, a room that I don't want to be in, like I'm locked in, I'm trying to, re trying to leave, and I see an, a movie actress. I don't understand the movie actresses. I saw um, Natalie Portman. And I was trapped in a room, and I saw a matter of important. I don't know. I don't remember what she was doing, but uh, she was there. And then the next morning, you know, throughout the day, I see a movie of Natalie Portman uh, uh, for what was it JFK's wife, something like that. It's like that is very strange, and so I don't know what that was about. So, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You don't even need to know the meanings of all this. But I give you one about at least the Zeta connections. It wasn't very friendly to Zeta, that's for sure. Um, from what I'm gathering, I don't know all the, all of the information on this. This is understand. It, you're never gonna know everything, but from what I got is I had Zeta lifetimes and I reincarnated as a human. I've had many human lifetimes, but then I reincarnated as a Zeta for a while, and I came back as human. Yeah, apparently it didn't go too well. You know, the Zeta connections, I believe in the webinar you hear some Zetas that feel like they're star seeds. They can't get along with this world and they have issues. You know, it's like, what am I doing here? Well, obviously I've had a lot of that. Either way, I wasn't, when I was in the human form, I wasn't pleasant to be around. And this is around maybe the Dark Ages or the Middle Ages, where well, I was pretty, pretty bad. And being pretty bad, the, I don't know, torturing people. I don't know the details, but it was not good. Um, I don't know if I was executed. I have been executed many lifetimes, but it's funny. I wasn't usually doing something bad. <laughs> I was just in the wrong place or something like that. Um, but as for, yeah, it's funny. When you're doing something, yeah, anyway, it's weird. <laughs> when you're doing nothing wrong, you get executed. When you're doing something bad, you're, you know, praised for it, you know, whatever. Huh, just like our government system right now, right? 
<laughs> yeah, that's mimicking that. Well, either way, I wasn't pretty. I wasn't very nice as a human. I don't. I don't know the details. I know I've tortured people and stuff, but can I, I've had the same thing happen to me also. So, whatever. But to go in, either way, I wasn't very nice, and I reincarnated back into a Zeta, and I wasn't very nice there either. Uh, the human life affected my Zeta life. It's like, the, you know, my Zeta life affected my human life, and then when I went back to a Zeta, that the human life affected my Zeta life. One thing I know, I was a Zeta that was, yeah, not mentally well at all. And I wanted to destroy the Earth. There was something, I don't know what was the story on that. But, it, I don't think I accomplished it, obviously. But, I don't know how far I got with it, but I know I just wanted to wipe the Earth off. Just get rid of it. And I wasn't mentally there, either, so. And, a lot of people have this issue from, not just Zeta, oh, not Reptilian. Reptilian has a lot of, uh, it would start a war for no reason. You know, that's a lot of reptilian. Zeta is a little bit different, but Zeta is probably more into the torturing stuff. <laughs> As you can tell with the abductions, that's very mimicking the, you know, it's not that much different. And maybe taking people, you know, dissecting people, that's the same Zeta stuff, so. I wouldn't doubt there's a connection there. <laughs> but anyway, I got. There was another Zeta lifetime I can't remember right now. But anyway, it wasn't. They weren't easy at all. They were very menacing, and a lot. It just. It was just very difficult to release the human stuff. What I did get is that the Zetas are trying to become more human, and they're experimenting on themselves. That I got. Yeah, and that was another reason why we weren't thinking very well either. We're doing all these experiments on each other, trying to figure out how to mimic humans and try to, you know, you know, be, do the human experience without being through the human experience, something like that. It was, either way, it didn't go very well. So it was a lot of, a lot of mistakes, and uh, it was just, you know, this is why Zetas get a bad rap. They're always experimenting on something they really shouldn't be doing, but, you know, somebody's got to do it, right? So, so anyway, um... I think it's, if I remember right, I think I went to like an alien jail. I think that's what, I've been, I've been releasing a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was an alien jail, this is why I can really channel these guys, gee, big surprise there. But you weren't treated well, you weren't treated like crap like they do here. You were treated well, actually, and what I got is the aliens would, uh, exam they would watch you. I mean, yeah, you'd be, you can, some of them can't be around other humans, they just, or other aliens, you just can't do it. But they do let you roam around, they do let you, I don't know if it's in cell, or it's, I do see cells. <laughs> that might be for the pretty bad ones, I don't know, I do see that, but they do monitor you, monitor you, but they don't torture you or anything like that. I mean, you're well fed, you're, you know, you're not being, you know, but they're just learning from you. How did you get here? What was this, you know, instead of like here where they're just, you know, they want you to go to jail and become a warrior. Of course, that's probably, well, I guess it could be worth it. And again, that's not much different than what you got now. It's just a lot of our attorneys didn't go to jail. <laughs> Most of them probably should be in jail, but anyway. Well, they know the system, so they stay out. So anyway. Um, but the reason I'm bringing that up is meaning is like a lot of this has been brought up in channel links here and there I don't remember it all of course but a lot of beings that come here and they have their galactic connections and their wiring is all screwed up it's just the way it is it's part of our experience it's just the way it is um, <clears throat> it's a warning experience and how do you know unless you try uh, to go into more detail of another so that's the Zeta connection uh, did pretty a lot of horrific things that I don't rem I've released a lot of stuff I don't remember it but I do feel a lot better I give it that <laughs> I mean it's best you don't remember you don't have to remember everything but definitely I was involved in many abductions <laughs> oh yeah did a lot of those <laughs> but this is this isn't like this is a long time ago this is before the 50s and the 60s this was back you know and you're I do know I do see myself 
appearing to somebody as a Zeta in like the Middle Ages and freaking them out. Or not always. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, depending on who you connect with. I do know I've done that. I've done, yeah, we've done all. We've done everything. But I do see a lot of abductions during those their dark ages, during those time, all those time periods. So um, there's a lot more details. Not, I don't know if it needs to be known. Maybe eventually it will be. But anyway, clearing this stuff out is uh, quite a uh, quite a journey. I'm still going through the reptilian stuff also. There's some stuff I came through. I don't remember all of this. I just know I am releasing a lot of it. And it's quite... Uh, it's not pleasant, so anyway. Uh, I told you a lot we don't know about ourselves. And I'll give you one that is... One that I do remember. And um, this is all about past lives. But human lifetimes. Nothing, nothing galactic. Let's see how this, uh, hopefully this connects to somebody. Recently I got more information about this. Over time, I didn't understand it. As I, a poem, let's put, okay, give you the story. In high school I had a friend that was kind of like a sociopath in some regard. Very intelligent, you know, IQ 200, a psychopath basically. Mr. Know-it-all. Um, can't be around people. He's around people, but he's like a human calculator, but, you know, he's ready to blow his brains out, basically. The best friends you can always have, right? <laughs> I don't know. I knew him in another lifetime, and I don't know him anymore, thank goodness. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for him, either. <laughs> he's not a good guy, but anyway, not to judge. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But anyway, give you, um, in high school, I'm not in high school, I'm not going to give him names or anything, but anyway, because this might, some of you might be able to Anyway, I'll put that out there. See, see, see what bites. But anyway, uh, he was obsessed over this girl. Uh, she was in his class. He talked to her. He always had an issue talking to her, but he was obsessed over her. Not a stalker, but uh, borderline, but not a stalker though. Not that I know of. No, no. He knew it. Yeah, of course he knew where she lived. Of course. No, that's not a stalker at all. So anyway. Uh, some females might be able to relate to this. <clears throat> That's another reason I mentioned this. Uh, hopefully they haven't been in this situation, though. So anyway, he always had, you know, he's always obsessed with her, didn't understand why. It was definitely a past life connection. Understand, this is in high school. I have no idea of any past lives or anything. Uh, one thing that, you know, he pointed me out, you know, pointed her out to me so I know who she is. And I did feel a past life connection. That was in school. Uh, but I didn't know what it was. And it was friendly, though. With him, it was very strange. Between him and her, very bizarre. And we did, that's true, we did go into the psychic stuff. Never thinking that we were psychic or anything. Not really. But we kind of got intuition. So, yeah, I guess I did. Never thinking that I was going to end up doing anything like this. But you know what I mean? Because um, we did get into the psychic stuff a little bit. I forgot where all that came from. It doesn't matter. Uh, about the past life stuff. That's right. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, what he got from himself was that he was a mobster of some kind. And uh, most likely, from what we're feeling, I think he got a reading from somebody, actually, come to think of it. I start remembering all this. Uh, he got a re Yeah, we did. This was later after high school, I think. Yeah, this was after high school. That's where we started doing the psychic stuff and got go to readers, you know, the, the, those on the street that had all the signs, and I don't recommend those to anybody, but anyway, uh, I haven't really done a reading on that, but most likely a lot of that is accurate. As for being a mobster, because he was very mobster-like, this is around the 1920s, and what's weird about it all is that this girl that he's obsessed with, from which, yeah, well, now I can connect with it, I'll just go into that, um, because they're in uh, 2011, I start, my intuitions are waking up. So, I can, you know, you tap into stuff that you've connected with in the past, and so you do your own little connection on that. And I think he was pat married to her in another lifetime, during a mobster lifetime. He was probably, yeah, I'm getting, like, he was an accountant. Yeah, of course. A psycho accountant. That really fits that one. 
Uh, but still a very dirty person, though. And he was married to her. It was all great in the beginning. And from what... This is what I got recently. Okay, well, before I go into that. What I did feel before... Now, this is in the early days of worrying my intuition. I had some sort of affair with her, and I didn't understand why. It wasn't bad. It's like, man, I'm a scumbag. What am I doing? Cheating on... You know, my friend, I, apparently I knew him during that time. I was like, what am I, cheating on him? And, or, you know, you know, I mean, not cheating on him, but, you know, going after his girl. That's his, like, wife. I'm having an affair with his wife. That's going really well. It's like, man, I'm a scumbag, you know what I mean? Not cheating on him, but you know what I mean. Cheating on her, whatever. Whatever. I'm a homewrecker. Well, not really, actually. So, when you, uh, uh, so, information actually came to me recently about all that. And I wasn't thinking about it at all. Just like, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, I'm a scumbag, I'm cheating, you know, I'm going after my friend's wife. And we did have an affair, it was positive. And apparently between him and her, it was not good at all. So, and here, I get, while well, I'm releasing all this stuff, for some reason that whole thing came back. And this is recent, of uh, apparently he was abusing her, like, rape type of abuse obsessive rape I got raped and they were married but you know you know what that means that means you still abuse somebody obviously and uh, that was the 1920s about that time so uh, I, I was connected to her I guess I was relieved from what was going on from what I gather <laughs> and he didn't know anything about it I don't think I was that close to him from what I'm gathering because he never found out uh, but he was very obsessive over her. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because in high school, she wanted nothing to do with him. <laughs> nothing. It's like she knew that he was bad news and did not know why. And he asked her out and she said, yeah. She said, I guess that would be nice. I have to mention that. Because <laughs> he kept saying that forever. <clears throat> Say, I guess that will be okay. <laughs> Yeah, she looks really thrilled on that one. So, yeah, she was uh, part of, uh, like, the upperclassmen type of hangout, you know, the, the jocks and stuff. She hung out with them. And he was, like, you know, the psycho that knew everything. So, um, so, but it was kind of interesting. It's like, she had, she went, but, man, let me tell you. After high school, this is before we know about any of this stuff. We saw her again, I guess. We saw her, and he's like, he's like, he, I guess he saw her smoking. He went like crazy, ballistic about it, you know, at, at a restaurant. You know, it's like, I think that was her. I don't know, whatever. But he was like super obsessed, like, yeah, like an obsessed husband over you know your item called your wife. And, uh, of course, he didn't sneak it. I don't know how it turned out or whatever, but anyway, she was not, she was totally disconnected from him. Wanted nothing to do with him. But there definitely was abuse. Of course, he didn't see it that way. And, you know, from another lifetime. It's just funny how we all don't remember anything in our current lives, but yet we have these bizarre connections. As for why she's, why we would go to a school with that there, I don't know why she would even bother with that, but who knows, but anyway, it was, I don't know if I was a mobster, I don't know anything about any of that, if I knew these people, it's not hard to know a mobster these days, that's true, so, um, not really, it's a legalized mafia called the, you know, the legal system, and our political system, so it's not hard to know the legalized mafia, so I'm not sure what, I don't know what my connection was, but anyway, I did know her, I did have an affair with her or something like that. And he never found out, so anyway. Because I would, uh, I would have been executed. I don't think him and me and him would be friends if that was the case, so. It's very bizarre. It's so weird. It's probably more to it than that, but uh, I don't know. But it was, uh, you know, back in the 1920s. Oh, well, lovely those days were. And not to say it's any much better nowadays. Improved in some areas, but still not so great. Yeah, so anyway, I wanted to at least put that out there of, uh, that we don't know our connections at all. It's a mystery, but, uh, it's quite interesting when you do get some intuition awakenings here and there of why this, I mean, I don't know why I even had, I mean, I wasn't even thinking about any of that. As long as, you know, I'm getting this, 
vision of give me some idea of what was going on there it just it just hit me like clear as day it's like he was being abusive to her and I don't know how I knew these people I don't know maybe I was a milkman that walked by I don't know maybe I was the I don't know a mailman I don't know so who knows so um yeah maybe I was their uber driver that was probably it <laughs> before they had uber <laughs> I don't know I don't know I guess it doesn't really matter um, some people, yeah, said I was a mobster, and I don't think that was true. That, I don't see that. Then again, who knows, when you have all these different aspects of you, it's, I don't know. But anyway, they wanted me, the guys wanted me to know that, probably because to tell others about it, to get, to give you a little bit of insight of, especially a lot of women know a lot of creepy guys, and so anyway, uh, these guys are creepy for a reason. Not always the case, but sometimes they do know you from another lifetime, and they were weird then too. Not always the case, but in some cases, yes. If a guy's obsessed, you had some sort of connection of some sort, somewhere, somehow, that triggered that, and he's unable to let it go. For this guy, he was unable to let it go. Is he still obsessed with her? Probably. Does she still want nothing to do with him? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, they had classes together. They were, you know, they were in, what do you call it, AP classes? You know, like the smart kid class, whatever that means. They were in those classes together, but, you know, they just had a class, a student, you know, it was like a business relationship, it's like, whatever. But he tried to have an actual relationship, and that just did not happen. And he felt weird around her, too. He felt, un he felt obsessed with her, but he felt uncomfortable with her at the same time. So, you know. <clears throat> Well, yeah, if you're abusing somebody, yeah, it's quite understandable. <laughs> Jeez. So, anyway, I may figure out how to put this out there. It should be good information for somebody. As I said, I don't know how I know these people. Um, I don't know how I knew either one of them. Uh, maybe I was Hugh Hefner. I don't know. At that time, I doubt it. I don't know. I, I don't know. <clears throat> They didn't tell me that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe a traveling shoe salesman. I'm not sure if they have those by then. They should, though. They should have them right now. So, anyway. So, I figured I'd put that out there. I think I just said that, but it should be educational for somebody. I think we're all aware of our past life connections. Well, there's a mystery out there. Doesn't mean you have to solve it, but there is a mystery. And sometimes you get indications of you know glimpses like why do these two people I'm gonna go on and on with this it's it's weird uh, why do these two people have this type of messed up relationship and yet they go to school together and in the same class why why even waste your time with that I guess it's another way of uh, showing that it's closure it's like this isn't happening that's probably another thing about it. It's like, you know, get yourself a second helping. Oh, that's right. I'm glad I continued this. I knew there was something else I wanted to mention. It had nothing to do with the Zeta. I put the Zeta stuff out there because I couldn't remember what it was. Here's another one for you. Yeah, I got another Whopper for you. <sighs> Jeez. Anyway, um, this girl that I know is a friend, and she had a boyfriend. And she was... Um, she helped me actually find the hypnotist that helped me awaken to my psychic abilities. And she doesn't contact me anymore, whatever. She has her own stuff going on. Um, but her and her boyfriend, what, it wasn't going so great. And me and her, we didn't really have the chemistry, really, but not really. But anyway, she is awakened to all the spiritual stuff, definitely. And he is kind of, uh, uh, he's Mexican and a mix of something else, but... And she was in, uh, Irish or something like that. He was Mexican, and I don't know. You wouldn't know he's. You know he's uh, from that type. He wasn't a, like a full breed of Mexican. He had a mix of a lot of other things, with lighter skin. Just to give me an idea. Um, and they always had issues. It's like, why are you two even together? And he was kind of a scumbag, but but they're attracted to each other. Wonder why. Well, she did a hypnotism, a hypnotized, 
hypnotism, whatever. She was hypnotized, and they do get pissed off at each other every once in a while. It was never great. But anyway, what she saw in the in her past life regression, that's what I should have said before, but anyway, past life regression, uh, she saw that they're in a primitive area, somewhere in America, I believe, and he was very, I get, I don't know, they're, they're a couple, and he was just yelling at her all the time, and I can see that in him, and uh, of course he's a lot different now, but anyway. In the past life regression, he was yelling at her all the time. Just can you imagine just somebody just you know, you have this poor woman and this older guy and he's just treating her like crap basically. Well one day she uh, she shot him and killed him. Couldn't take it anymore. And you can say the grief was still with her, but let me tell you, she felt a lot better after that. I don't think she was accused of murder. It, it was like in the middle of nowhere. So it's like the chances of anybody doing anything is like zero. <clears throat> it was that primitive. It was near nothing. I don't know. I, I imagine it's in America somewhere. So it was on farmland. Anyway. Uh, and so it made sense of, you know, they're always having s their connection. and I mean, they're, they're attracted to each other, but it's like for all the wrong reasons. And uh, after that, uh, there's a guy at... I think it was someone that I, it was a custom uh, where she worked. I'll give this away because it doesn't matter. She worked at a Panera Bread, and uh, there was a guy there that kept for her, where talking to her, and he finally asked her out, and uh, and then they hooked up together, and they felt you know, she basically left her old boyfriend for this new guy, which worked out really well actually. I think I'm not sure if they had a kid or not with this new guy, but she saw that. I, don't, I never talked to her. There's, I tried to contact her and never heard back, but it doesn't matter. She moved on. But uh, her old boyfriend became very obsessive. I think he was also, yeah, he was stalking her. Uh, became hospitalized. He just lost his mind. So, which wasn't good. And I told his brother about it. I know his brother. And, you know, I'm trying to be friends. And he's like, and it just, you know, the family kind of keeping this stuff quiet. You know, she told me uh, what happened, and so you know, his brother's got major issues. But anyway, so I figured that would be quite interesting for some. So uh, that was uh, pretty pretty out there. Um, I'm not sure what, how. I believe he eventually went on it, went in his other direction eventually. But uh, yeah, that tells you uh, a lot of these life, you know, these people that get together and shouldn't be together, and some, you know, not to say all relationships are like that in the past, but you never know. Of course, I've I've had past life regression where I've people I've known relationships, female relationships, like intimate relationships where I've been like, stabbed by her in my lifetime, you know, undeserving of it. <clears throat> so anyway, as uh, far as I know, yes. And I had to have a relationship with her. Gee, I'm like freaking crazy. See, see what I mean? So anyway, it's not always that's not always the case, but there is cases like that. So, so I figured I'd uh, make that known. Uh, hopefully, I'll educate somebody. Uh, if they don't believe in past life, that's fine, but they are very real. Trust me. One lifetime here is never enough. Yeah, many lifetimes. Uh, you need to start worrying about your mental stays. I don't know, it must be insane to keep coming back here. But what I'm getting about many incarnations here is this, you learn so much, it's hard, it becomes an addiction. Of course, then you get stuck in the cycle and you become unspiritual, disconnected, become a robot, become part of the, you know. But then again, it's all part of the show. So anyway, uh, I think I've said enough now. It's been uh, three minutes, I think. So, uh, hopefully, this is helping somebody out in the universe. Uh, maybe not. But I figure I'll put that out there. So, much love, everyone. Blessings. And uh, I'll have a channel after that.